Let us now move on to a topic that is seemingly different, but we will see that is in fact related to these matchings. So remember from long time ago, we men uh, looked at Menger's theorem. So this was when we studied edge connectivity and vertex connectivity. Uh, we referred to a theorem by Menger and also other people that says that a graph is K edge connected. K edge connected means that the removal of less than k edges will not disconnect the graph. So a graph is k edge connected if and only if any two distinct vertices can be joined by k paths uh, that don't share edges with each other. So uh, k paths, no two of which have an edge in common, or what one would also say k edge disjoint paths. And there was a similar theorem for vertex connectivity. So a graph K is K vertex connected, which by definition means that the removal of less than K vertices would not disrupt or disconnect the graph. This is equivalent to any two distinct vertices uh, that can be joined by K paths, no two of which have another vertex in common. So. Uh, these theorems, in fact, are consequences of more general theorems that were proved by Menger for vertices and Ford and Fulkerson for edges. So let's look at those theorems and what their link to matching is. So the notion is that of VW disconnecting sets. So let's first look at edge connectivity and edge removals. So take a connected graph G and let V and W be two distinct vertices. Then a VW disconnecting set is a set of edges so that each path from V to W includes an edge from E. So if I have V here and W here and something that goes like this, then this edge and this edge for an example of a VW disconnecting set, because there's, if I remove these edges, there's no way to go from V to W. In particular, this is a disconnecting set for the graph, but it's a disconnecting set that makes sure that our particular vertex V and W end up in different groups, as if we hate them in particular and want to separate them. So that's first remark. And the second remark is that the number of edge disjoint paths from V to W can't be greater than the size of any such disconnecting set, because no edge in E can be included in more than one such path. So if we look at this example, uh, we had these edges E1 and E2. And so there cannot be more than two edge disjoint paths from V to W, because each path from V to W will have exactly one edge uh, from this set, because they are edge disjoint, so two paths cannot share the same edge, then they wouldn't be edge disjoint. So uh, this is the conclusion. So in particular, this means that the maximum number of edge disjoint paths is smaller than or equal to the minimum number of edges in a VW disconnecting set. So you take, if you have a graph where you can find a dis um, VW disconnecting set having six edges and no smaller VW disconnecting set, then you know that there cannot be more than six edge disjoint paths from V to W because they have to go through this minimal set that disconnects the graph leaving V and W on opposite sides. So let me repeat, the maximum number of such paths is smaller than or equal to the minimum number of edges in a VW disconnecting set. And the remarkable thing is that, in fact, it is equal to it. So the maximum number of edge disjoint paths from a vertex V to a different vertex W in a connected graph is equal to the minimum number of edges in a VW disconnected set. And so here you can see that, uh, well, what I can have possibly this path and this path. These are two paths and there are no more. And this is exactly the number of edges in my VW disconnecting set. 
This is convenient because finding disconnecting sets sometimes is easier than finding entire collections of paths. So then you know this certain number. And as a consequence of this, you know that a graph is k edge connected if and only if any two distinct vertices can be joined by k paths, no two of which have an edge in common, what we previously called Menger's theorem. Why does this corollary follow? Well, if the graph being k edge connected means precisely that each disconnecting set has greater than or equal to k edges, which means that each VW disconnecting set has greater than or equal to k edges for any choice of different V and W, which is equivalent to the maximum number of edge disjoint paths from V to W uh, being greater than or equal to k by the theorem. So here we use the theorem to prove this equivalent because this uh, maximum number is equal to the uh, minimum number of edges in a disconnecting set, which is greater than or equal to k by the previous step. Yeah, but if the maximum number of edge disjoint paths is greater than or equal to k, this means that there are k edge disjoint paths from v to w, as we wanted in the corollary. So far, we have uh, disconnected two vertices v and w from each other, by removing edges. We can play the same game removing vertices. Let's briefly look at how this looks. So now we talk about a VW separating set. That's a set of uh, vertices that do not contain V and W, and so that any path from V to W passes through some vertex in this set. So if we have V and W here, and you have something like that, then uh, this set, the red set, is a uh, VW separating set because any path from V to W has to pass through one of these, but also this blue set consisting of only one vertex is also a VW separating set because any path has to pass through this vertex. In particular, it is a separating set for the graph, and the number of vertex disjoint paths from V to W can't be greater than the size of any VW separating set, because no vertex can be included in more than one such path. So here, in fact, I cannot have more than one path from V to W without repeating the vertices, because if I had two vertex disjoint paths, meaning that two paths not sharing vertices apart from V and W, this will not be possible because they would all have to share this blue vertex. And again, we can formulate this by saying that the maximum number of vertex disjoint paths is smaller than or equal to the minimum number of vertices in a VW separating set. And in fact, Menger now himself from in 1927 found out that the maximum number of vertex disjoint paths is equal to the minimum number of vertices in a VW separating set. And it is as a, consequent of as a consequence of this that we get the corollary, previously known as Menger's theorem, that a graph is k-vertex connected if and only if any two distinct vertices can be joined by k-vertex disjoint paths. And uh, the proof that this corollary follows from the theorem is similar to the edge case. One interesting thing about Menger's vertex version of the theorem is that we can use it to prove Hall's theorem. So remember Hall's theorem said that if you have J jobs and A applicants, then you can find a perfect matching or a complete matching if and only if each set of K jobs has uh, at least K jointly qualified applicants. Now, the proof using Menger's theorem is as follows. We'll sketch it and then we'll look at a picture. So first you add a vertex V that you join by one edge to each vertex uh, in J in the set of jobs and a vertex W that is joined by one edge to each vertex in A, the set of applicants. 
then you observe that a complete matching from J to A exists, if and only if there are J vertex disjoint paths from V to W. We will see how this works in the sketch. And also we will show that each VW separating set has at least as many vertices as the number of jobs. Menger's theorem now tells us uh, that the uh, number of um, vertex disjoint paths from V to W, the maximum such number, is equal to the minimum number of edges in a VW separating set. And so this equality um, combined with the previous two observations uh, lead to the conclusion. So let's look at how it works. So the example is here. This is what we did. So we had our bipartite graph with jobs and applicants, and we drew V here and W here. So what we want to do is to have this one-to-one -one correspondence from jobs to applicants, say like that. But each such uh, edge corresponds by adding the edge to W and the edge to V to a path from V to W and to different such job to applicant uh, associations will be uh, vertex disjoint because they go through different jobs and different applicants. So how do we need to show that each separating set has at least as many elements as the number of jobs? Well, if you have a separating set, then it will consist of a set of jobs and a set of applicants. So maybe my separating set will contain this job and these two applicants. And notice that I cannot have any edge between the jobs outside my separating set and the applicants outside my separating set. Because if I did have uh, an edge between G2 and A1, in this case, I would be able to complete it to a path from V and W, so it cannot be a separating set. This means that all the vertices, so let's go back to the separating set, all the vertices in A that are adjacent to applicants who are not in the separating set are in fact themselves in the separating set. So the job itself has to be in the separating set if um, for each applicant qualified for it who is not in the separating set. In other words, since uh, J minus K can be mapped one to one inside B, we know that the number of elements in J minus K is smaller than or equal to the number of elements in B. B was the applicant part of our separating set. Why is that? It's because of our assumption that any set of jobs has at least as many jointly um, qualified applicants. So since J minus K is smaller than or equal to B, this implies that the number of uh, vertices in our separating set S, which is the number of vertices among the jobs plus the number of vertices among the applicants. Now knowing that the set B here uh, has at least as many elements as the set J minus K, this whole thing will be at least as big as K plus uh, the number of elements in K plus the number of elements in J when I had removed K, which is exactly the number of elements in J. So altogether, this calculation, a bit technical and tricky, shows that this separating set has at least as many uh, elements as the number of jobs as desired. 